Greetings everyone, welcome back to my travel channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some worthwhile places to visit in Malta. I start my journey on Anchor Bay, which is often associated with the 1980 Hollywood musical Popeye starring Robin Williams. Like many bays in Malta, its steep sides lend themselves to some great views down below. The bay was named Anchor Bay because a lot of Roman anchors were discovered by divers here. There's definitely a lot of character in Popeye Village. Attractions here include museums, games rooms, boat trips on Anchor Bay, rides, and even shows you can play the role as one of the characters. There is also an opportunity to see clips from the actual film in their cinema. The marketing manager always aims to bring something new to this place. And walking through the centre of this purpose-built village gives visitors easily enough to explore. Afterwards, you can grab a bite in their harbour-facing restaurant. Since becoming a film set, Popeye Village has become one of the major tourist attractions in Malta. Entrance for adults and children can be found on their website. Just click on the link in the description section below for more information. The village is located in the northern region of Malta Island in an area known as Melika. And it's this very region which brings me to the next place on my list. The country is a great place for water sports, so why not try your hand at a spot of scuba diving off Chikewa Harbour? This was my first time in 18 years, and getting back into it was like riding a bicycle. It's amazing what you can recall if you haven't done it in a while. On this occasion, I was only at a depth of approximately 15 metres, but felt completely comfortable after such a time had passed. My diving instructor ensured safety, at all times by executing various drills and procedures amidst the fish and other divers. I dived for an hour as part of a scuba tune-up lesson for a very affordable 50 euros. This included all the necessary equipment and transportation from the dive centre to the dive site at Chikewa. The instructors at Seashell Diving School were friendly and naturally made me feel at ease. Like most diving schools, they are PADI certified. Unfortunately, I didn't have time for the wreck dives Malta is so renowned for, and wasn't lucky enough to see any octopus. That said, sightings of them are common. You can encounter plenty of sea life just a few metres below the surface of the water. I spotted jellyfish, Turkish wrasse with their electrifying colours. They also respond really well to certain underwater sounds. There were also plenty of sea urchins and starfish to be found. Meliha where the dive centre is based, also has an abundance of hotels and international restaurants to suit all budgets. It's an ideal spot to base yourself for exploring the rest of Malta to the south, as well as the islands of Gozo and Comino. And that's where I'm heading now. Comino is placed in between Malta Island and Gozo, and is easy to get to from either of these neighbouring islands. I decided to stop off at Gozo for the night beforehand. Comino is the country's third largest island and got its name after the cumin seed that once prospered throughout the archipelago. This place is paradise. I just arrived into Comino from Gozo. It took no more than 15 minutes by private boat. It cost 15 euros and here I am. The turquoise water is ideal for snorkelers, divers, photographers, beach bums, and even vloggers. The size of this place is approximately 3.5 kilometers and thus is pretty difficult to get lost in. So just come here, enjoy the views. And what I quite like about this place is not so much the scenery, but the calm atmosphere and seeing people happy and enjoying themselves in such a beautiful, idyllic little island. 
Wow. Now that is something. But Comino is not without its fair share of dark history. I'm standing outside an abandoned hospital which was built in the late 19th century and was used for cholera victims up until the early 20th century. Now, there's restricted access here, but you don't actually need to go in in order to get a feeling for how it might have been. The former hospital is one of the largest buildings on the island and after its decline, served as a school for the few children inhabiting Comino at the time. After years of neglect, who knows what will become of it? Of the inhabited islands in Malta, Comino is easily the least densely populated, and its permanent population currently stands at two. The coastline is merited by limestone cliffs, caves and coves, and I can highly recommend coming here for whatever takes your fancy. Besides pleasant walks and its fair share of history, Comino is also popular for diving, much like my last encounter at Chikewa. Having soaked in the sun, sea and sand of Comino, I make for M. Dina. One of Malta's more charming cities, positioned in the middle of the island. The place has thousands of years of history from as far back as the Phoenicians. Coming here is very much about the alleyways and very intricate, stylish balconies protruding over the, the lanes which weave their way through town. It's certainly very quiet here. The small arches and doors which demonstrate an array of pastel coloured hues are most pleasing to walk past. The sounds of birds on the rooftops. Over time, Emdina went from being a fortified town for defence to a place for nobility. Now it makes for an ideal spot to admire its history and beauty. Here, there are few cars besides ones used for special purposes or by the permanent residents of the city. Last but not least is a rather special church located in the city of Mostar, just five kilometers farther north from Emdina. May I present Malta's largest and most famous church, the Rotunda of Mostar. You can see the facade, which was meant to reflect the Pantheon in Rome and was structured and built in neoclassic design in 1833 in order to accommodate the growing number of citizens in the city. Let's go and take a look around, shall we? It took 28 years to build and was actually completed in the early 1860s. The old church inside was subsequently demolished and the new site was not consecrated since it operated as the same place of worship throughout construction. Due to its proximity to an airfield, it was prone to bombardment in World War II. Of the three bombs that were dropped in 1942, two were deflected and one pierced the dome but didn't manage to detonate. Inside were 300 people awaiting mass. Later on, it was diffused and dropped into the sea. A similar one lies in the back of the church as a memory of what occurred. The church is considered to be one of Malta's architectural masterpieces, and anyone with an appreciation for buildings should definitely check this place out. There are so many places I found of interest in Malta, so here are just a handful of notable mentions I'd like to add. Number 1. Blue Grotto I need not say too much about this place, apart from emphasising how scenic it is. Owing to its beauty, various films and adverts have been shot here. Number 2. Dingley Cliffs Some of these cliffs rise 200 metres above sea level and provide a dramatic setting for keen photographers at sunset. Dingley is said to be derived from Thomas Dingley who was a knight of the Order of St. John who owned land here. 3. Gozo This is another place perfect for scenic walks over cliffs. Besides this though, the island affords rolling hills, lots of history, and it's more sparsely populated than Malta Island. 
Consequently, without looking too hard, you might even be the only person for miles around. 4. Hajjain. Come here and give reverence to this archaeological wonder. It's over 5,000 years old and even predates the Egyptian pyramids. The canopy you see over it is used to protect the stones from the elements. 5. Valletta. How can you come to Malta and not visit Valletta? The city is packed with historical monuments, bastions, fortresses, 16th century buildings and so many different food options. It is said to be a city built for gentlemen by gentlemen and has become a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1980. Thanks very much for watching. That concludes my journey through Malta. Please stay tuned for more very interesting videos coming up. In the meantime, stay safe and you'll see me on the next video. Bye for now.